This is the Villa Rave, a bike with two soles, a bike designed to blur the lines between road and gravel. I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about it, take it for a ride, and then introduce you to a new presenter. Avocate. The Rave is one bike with two personalities. And due to all other GCM presenters being busy for the day, I've got to somehow film this video by myself. This is the all road Rave. Look at this thing, it's incredible. It looks fast and super slick. And this is my gravel spec Rave. It looks amazing and is mega with these big chunky tires. Two bikes, one frame set, the same for each. How have they done that? It's a, it's a quiver killer, isn't it? Now, how do you go about making a bike which is fast and racy, at home on the rough stuff, yet speeds along on a smooth tarmac? Well, Vilia really say it's about taking the technology and ride characteristics from their top spec Filante and Zero SLR models and by refining and fine tuning it to meet the demands of gravel riders and racers, just like you. But they already know quite a lot about gravel bikes because they have four dedicated gravel bikes in their lineup. And they know a thing or two about making road bikes as well because they've been doing that for 116 years. Okay, road bike Alex, let's um, hit the road. Yeah, all right, cool. Right, the big question. You might think the road bike world and gravel bike world are diverging. So to have such a big manufacturer say no, one bike does it all, well, it's a surprise, isn't it? So how is that? The key is in the geometry. Villiers say they started out with a road bike. And this all-road version that I'm riding is a feeling I'm very familiar with. I've got responsive steering, fast rolling tires. And with this road group set that's fitted to this bike, I've got gearing which is suitable for the speeds I'm likely to hit. However, the geometry is different to the bikes used by Team Astana, for example. Although they have used this bike and ridden it to victory, but that was in a pro gravel race in Italy. But you know what I mean. So the differences between an out and out race bike and this bike are at the front here. We've got a 15 mil higher stack height, which means the handlebars sit that little bit higher up to increase your comfort and control on the bike. Although that being said as well, you have still got a fairly aggressive position. We've got a more relaxed or slack head tube angle, which means the steering isn't quite so razor sharp, but it does increase the stability and control that you have. And in addition to that, we've got slightly longer chain stays at the rear of the bike, again, to help with that stability and control. But crucially, it creates the extra clearance required for gravel tires. Yep, we've got the same frame and same forks, but in the gravel spec build, which I've got here, we've got up to 42 millimeter wide tires. Not exactly on the rowdy end of the gravel bike spectrum, but it's designed for racing and going fast. Probably not a bike that you'd want to go mountain biking on or bike packing across the Atacama Desert. But as our good friend Jeremy Powers used to say, you can do anything on a 40 millimeter tire. The other key difference between the two bikes are the handlebars. On this version I've got here, I've got the gravel J bar with this really cool split stem design. In addition to that, the difference between the zero all road handlebar is that we've got a slightly wider profile to the tops to help improve the comfort for your hands. The drops are slightly flared and it's these changes which all help to aid the stability and control that you have. Those differences do transform the bike, not unrecognizably, but they are distinctive. So we've got the same frame set, 
But what are some of the stats which you need to know? Well, the frame itself weighs 950 grams, the forks 415 grams, and when I asked Villier about the carbon fiber used to make the frame, they say it's exactly the same as the carbon fiber used in their top spec SLR bikes, both the Zero and the Falante. And they also say it uses something called viscoelastic fibers, such as liquid crystal polymers. Now I must confess, this is something I didn't really know much about, but I'm told it's a material whose molecules form a crystalline structure when melted, meaning that as it cools to form a solid, it not only holds its shape, but also its directional strength to a very high tolerance. Who knew? As I mentioned, there's clearance for 42 millimeter wide tires on this bike. And in both of the handlebar versions, both the Zero all road version and the gravel J bar, the cables and hoses are routed internally through the handlebars, through the stem and into the frame. This gives the bike a nice neat and tidy sleek look. Which one you want to go for is down to you, the rider. Want to ride gravel with a bit of road mixed in? We'll go for one of the gravel spec builds. Want to ride the road with a bit of gravel mixed in? Well, consider one of the all road build options. And it's there that you'll find those larger gear ratios. But that's fine for most types of gravel. Well, with a large cassette anyway. And Shimano's road group sets have been used by some of the world's best cyclocross riders for a number of different years. So here are my two raves. To my right is the gravel spec build and to my left is the all road build. So speaking of the all road build, let me run you through some of the specs of the bike. We've got the all new Dura Ace 9200 road group set. We've got a two by setup on this bike running a 50 34 tooth chainring setup. And at the rear of the bike on the cassette, we have an 11 to 28 tooth cassette. The disc rotors are 160 millimeter at the front and 140 millimeter at the rear. The wheel set is a road wheel set and we've got those larger volume road tires on here. These ones are a 32 millimeter wide. As I've mentioned before, with the two different handlebar specs that we've got, this is the zero handlebar option, which puts your rider in a slightly lower and slightly more aggressive position. And the gravel bike build is set up one by. The chain ring is a 40 tooth and the front derailleur mount is completely removable should you wish to take it off and utilize that setup. At the rear of the bike, the cassette is a 10 through to a 44 tooth on the largest sprocket. And some of the other differences between these two bikes are the handlebars, as I've already mentioned before. The J-Spec handlebar weighs 390 grams, whereas the Zero road or all road spec bar weighs 330 grams. And in their current spec builds, as they sit here in front of me, the all road version weighs 7.7 .7 kilograms and the gravel spec version weighs 8.3 kilograms. So compared to the Falanti road bike, Villia have tweaked the reach of the Rave SLR frame set. So in a large like I've got here, the reach is in fact the same as the Falanti SLR, but if you move down to the slightly smaller sizes, the top tube length decreases, so you have a shorter reach. Whereas if you move up the size chart, so you've got the extra large and the extra extra large frame set, they've lengthened the reach of the bike. And the reason for that is to try to retain some of the ride and handling characteristics of the road bike, but make it stable and comfortable enough for the gravel. In addition to that, the seat post has a vast amount of adjustability too. We can have a zero setback or we can have it 15 millimeter option. Villia call the Rave a performance bike, born out of customer demand, and they've created one bike with two soles. And I'm inclined to agree with them here. The change of tires or difference between the handlebars really does alter your perspective as a rider. And you know what? I'm all for versatility. In an age when bikes are becoming more and more specialist, it's a refreshing approach. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a big thumbs up. And why not let me know in the comments section down below which Villier Rave you choose. Would it be the gravel spec build? Or would you go for the all-road version? Hmm. See ya.